Well, in our continuing saga to uh, build Team Win Recovery Project for our um, phone, uh, the uh, Blue Life XL that, uh, to the best of my knowledge, doesn't have any Team Win Recovery Project uh, built for it, um, we actually need a few things from the phone itself. Now, we uh, found that we could find the uh, source code for the kernel, but um, I wanted to show you, if the, in the event that you couldn't find the kernel source code, how you can take the kernel itself and break it down and get uh, get that from the boot image. Um, so that way, uh, if you run into this sort of problem, you could at least make Team Win Recovery Project for your uh, for your phone or tablet. This doesn't help you for building custom ROMs because you need to add a few custom features into the kernel to make everything work properly. Um, it is possible to do. Um, without the source code but it's very very difficult and so I don't recommend it um, again uh, you do need a phone that is able to be unlocked so that way you can flash things to the bootloader or this really doesn't matter anyways but uh, so what what I've done here is I've actually used uh, ADB and I've jumped into the phone itself and so uh, and then of course gone to become the uh, root user with uh, SU and so you would need to root your phone prior to being able to do this and what I've done then is uh, is I've just uh, changed my directory to go to the dev block platform and then the actual name of the essentially the hard drive of this phone and by name and what we see in there is if we do an LS LAH boot we're looking for the actual partition that the boot drive is made from and it says hey the boot drive is device block MMC BLK uh, 0 partition 20 so it's on the first drive remember that Linux starts with 0 uh, and on the 20th partition um, and so since it starts with zero that's actually the 21st actual physical partition but it's partition number 20 and we can utilize uh, simple tools like disk destroyer or DD uh, to make a copy of that and so I run this command DD uh, with the input file equals and then the name of wherever that drive was space output file equals and I just put it on the SD card and named it boot.image and you can see that it uh, took up approximately uh, 32 megabytes and it took 1.2 seconds and then that is done so if we jump over to SD card and we ls how about ls lah and we'll look for boot boot anything which is our boot image right there we see uh, we see it available and now we can take that if we exit out of the phone and we can ADB pull and grab that SD card boot dot image and place it right here um, actually we'll put it in uh, in my downloads folder And there we go. So now if we CD into the downloads folder and we look for that boot.image file, we'll see there it is and it's 32 megabytes. So now we can actually work on breaking it down, which uh, we've done in previous uh, videos before. Um, and uh, I do want to show again how that's done because it's it's fairly um, important thing to be able to do. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is a certain uh, amount of tools, so I'm just going to make a folder real quick. We'll put everything in there, and then we can uh, look at those tools and where we get them and how they work. All right, so I've downloaded all the tools that we need. Um, I do have uh, these tools all posted on my website where you can get them from. I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, going back to this for you, so that way you'll be able to find it very quickly. Um, but uh, if you happen to not be able to uh, grab the link off of the description you're welcome to just head over to my website the alaska linux user wordpress.com and if you just do a search for mk boot it should show you several different articles but one of them being porting debian linux to your cell phone part one of three it was a project where i actually um, turned a 
regular Android cell phone into a regular Debian computer um, and uh, and was utilizing uh, the XFCE desktop and um, you know touch screen and and using it as well but anyways uh, in there the first thing it has some downloads you need to download this unpack boot image pl this unmake boot image repack boot image pl and make boot image and these tools uh, are available elsewhere but uh, this is just a handy place to grab them um, I mentioned this in my other previous video on this as well so hopefully that will be uh, useful to you and I'll try to remember to provide a link for you there so I've put these in a um, folder here. I'm calling it LifeXL Tools folder. And I've got the four tools, Make Boot Image, Unmake Boot Image, the Repack Boot Image, and the Unpack Boot Image. And then I have the uh, boot image that we just copied from the phone. Now, how do we use these tools? Well, it's really, really simple. Um, as you can see, these tools have to be marked as being executable so if they're not green and executable like you see here you can always just do a chmod a plus x and then you could just do everything in the folder if you wanted or you can do them by name make boot image or um, repack boot image all of those just to make sure that they all have the permission to be executed because that's going to be very very um, important. So what you can do is you uh, run this make or unmake rather since we're taking it apart unmake boot image and you use that on this boot dot image file and here's exactly what you get make this a little bigger so we can read everything in here so we get our uh, Just go ahead and make this take up as much screen there. So we have our original boot image, and then we have our four tools, but we also get this init ramfs cpio.gz, and we get this z image. Okay, so these are this is the kernel and the ram disk separated out. So make boot image is a tool that's actually used while you're you know compiling Android while you're compiling team win recovery project and unmake boot image is just a program that does the opposite and uh, so um, put together by Michael Q Quizma here and so shout out to him and say thank you very much because it's a very handy tool uh, and what I like to do is I like to copy all of this and actually I, I'll usually just grab everything there so I know what command I was running and I tend to want to put this into a file like so and save that for later use so what's really great is this will tell you you know the kernel size kernel address uh, RAM disk size and address the um, flash page size and command line that was used really really important command line that was used um, to boot this kernel and uh, then it also will uh, give you some more information right here and the command if you want to recompile this image here's the command that you would run to put it back together so if you actually open this up changed a little something and then put it back together here's the command that you would use to do that and so it's really handy to uh, to grab these tools and make sure that you have all this information um, available for later in case you need it so then the other tool we can uh, create a folder and we'll put the uh, unmake uh, folder and we'll put these in there so if we run the other tool the unpack tool works the same way unpack boot image dot pl and then you say the boot image right there uh, this um, has a lot less information however I still like to copy it because it's always good to keep as much information as you can I like to copy the command that I ran so I know that's what this is the output of um, it doesn't really tell you anything here but what is really really nice about this is it gives you the boot image RAM disk then the boot image kernel still zipped up and then you can actually 
open and go into the RAM disk and look at all the files in there without having to um, do further work to unzip it. So it's a very, very, very handy tool uh, to utilize. Um, it actually is a Python script. You can open it with a text editor and actually read everything that it does. And uh, a really, really great uh, script that somebody put together. But so now that we've broken down our image, now we have the Z image that we can utilize. That's the actual kernel itself. So if we want to build Team Win Recovery Project without using source code for the kernel, if you run into this situation where you're trying to build for a phone and the manufacturers have not released the kernel source like they're supposed to according to law, then you can break down this boot image and take the Z image and use that to build your Team Win Recovery Project from. So we also happen to have the source for this um, particular uh, kernel. So uh, using the source is a good way to go, is actually a better way to go than using a pre-compiled um, kernel because you don't really know what they've done or what they've changed to make it the way they want it. But, uh, but having the source is definitely a much, much better option. So I wanted to touch on that, how we take that apart and how we can use that. I am going to show specifically which line we would add to um, utilize this in our Team Win Recovery Project device tree that we're going to make for this Life XL phone. So hopefully you'll find that interesting and uh, look forward to uh, continuing the build.